Well, this is not as dramatic and potentially violent as I thought or hoped it wouldn't be. <laughs> so that's good. Later. Don't forget, now is your chance to help us name the new bird. Be sure to leave more of your suggestions in the comments and join our flight club on Patreon or YouTube channel members to vote on the name December 8th. Being a part of our flight club also gets you exclusive perks like the ability to join our private chat on Discord. Can't wait to see what you all vote for and I hope you enjoy the video. Well, everybody, today, oh, Rhea, I don't know what she's doing. Today is the day. Today is the day we introduce the new bird to everybody else. We're gonna do a little roll call here first. See, we have Lalo and Rhea here, and then you can probably see Jade way in the back there. She just jumped down and Beatrix is on the exact opposite side. <laughs> you ready to meet your new boyfriend, Rhea? Maybe. If you guys don't try to kill each other, I'm willing to bet that Rhea probably wants another pocket blueberry. Well, I guess it's that time. Time to bring them out. Might have to refill their food bowls first. Just to make sure everybody has enough food and nobody's fighting over anything. But, uh, all right, here we go. Let me go get him. What do you think, buddy? Oh. Rhea did not want to, <laughs> did not want to stay near him very long. <laughs> Oh, neither did Beatrix. Are they all gonna be afraid of him? <laughs> Go say hi. Go say hi to him, Lolo. That's your new brother. Isn't it nice to have a brother for a change? Beatrix is doing down there, but he's checking her out. And a blueberry buddy. Let's not get jealous now, Rhea. Rhea might be jealous I'm giving him attention. And not her. Oh, look. Oh. <laughs> Chasing her off. Let's not start any competition here now. Get his little tongue sticking out. It's still sticking out, look at that. <laughs> I guess all we can do is, I'm gonna sit back and try to film them from afar with the other camera. I wish I had a longer lens for stuff like this. Actually, I'm, I think, uh, you know what? I'm gonna add a longer lens to our Amazon wish list if anybody wants to. Actually, I'm gonna add a bunch of new stuff, I think, before this video is up. So if anybody wants to check that out and uh, send us some stuff from Amazon uh, to the birds or to help with filming and stuff, that would be pretty awesome. So, of course, we still need to name him, which is something we're gonna do with the um, our patron, our Patreon subscribers and, uh, channel members here very soon. So we got a couple of new good suggestions for names as well from the last video. So thanks for that guys. And if you have any more suggestions, make sure you comment them down below. Well, this is not as dramatic and potentially violent as I thought or hoped it wouldn't be. <laughs> so that's good. Hi, Future Brock here. So this is a natural behavior called fencing. Fencing is actually a common part of toucan communication. It's required to help them determine where they belong in their hierarchy, in their flocks. So, although it looks violent, I kind of just let it play out and watch from a distance and make sure it doesn't get too crazy because as long as they're just going for each other's beaks, there's not really any danger involved. But it's necessary for their flock structure.
Well, it's day two now, and we're starting the morning off here with some scrambled eggs and some pellets there. So you got Lalo, and I don't know, he has been, I noticed yesterday, primarily with Beatrix, but he's been uh, following them around with food. And I think maybe he's trying to feed them, Beatrix specifically, but uh, they don't want to get near him. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, they don't want to get near him. They're just like kind of respecting his space or, you know. I mean, typically flocks of the larger toucans kind of stay fairly far apart unless they're paired off. So it makes sense. But um, I don't know. Like it's, I was expecting more aggression from either them or him to the others, but so far they've all been pretty calm and respectful of each other. And it's very unusual, honestly, because uh, I have a friend, for instance, that has two keel bills. Uh, one of which was, oh, no, oh yeah, you're not gonna bite me, are you? Yeah, okay, yeah. Got me a little worried for a second. I'm used to keel bills biting me. I like kind of pulled back. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> just out of instinct. But um, my friend has a male and a female keel. The female was the bird found with Jade, uh, which is how I ended up with Jade because they were both trying to breed these. T or this guy was trying to breed two female toucans together, <laughs> and then uh, obviously that didn't work out, and you know, uh, some kind of family drama left left them uh, in a van and not in the house. They were trying to breed them in a house in like a macaw cage too, but um, anyways, that's besides the point. But she has been having issues getting her birds to not try to kill each other immediately. And honestly, it's, it's kind of a problem with breeding toucans in general that toucans just want to murder anything in sight typically. And it's hard to get them to play nice with each other and I'm kind of astonished that things have worked out so well with here because not only is it not only do we have multiple birds kind of coexisting but and cohabitating but different species as well so um, I don't know I wish I wish I had an answer and I, I know it has a lot to do with the fact that I let them warm up next to each other for quite a while before I ever introduce them and they have a lot of space here to get away from each other if they need to so um, that definitely helps but I'm really pleased with everything and how well everybody is treating each other and everyone's being respectful of each other and that's just kind of amazing and it's really encouraging and you're really happy about that egg huh and Rhea and Lalo are typically sitting more towards the back near me, where I've been sitting, um, or closer to the house, but, and then Jade and Beatrix usually hang out on that side, so, um, I don't know, look, here's all three of them in the same picture, I know the others are far away, but, I'm hoping we get some actual, like, interaction between them where they're actually more friendly to each other, but, we'll see, you know, time will tell. As long as they're just fencing and nothing's getting violent, then I'm happy. And honestly, even the other birds, I haven't seen them fence in a long time. It, they do it a lot at first when they're first introduced, and then after that, it kind of just settles down, and then they stop. So um, they kind of figure out where they place themselves in their little hierarchy, and once they get that figured out, they're more respectful of each other. So, but... Uh, even with him, you know, we haven't seen much of that happening at all, so. Just a little with Jade, and a little with Lalo that I've seen so far. But even less with Lalo, it was like just two little quick taps and that was about it. J he and Jade are the only ones that have actually kind of gotten into a match. But ever since then, they've, they've been fine. So, hey buddy, you like that papaya? You want some egg? 
There you go. Some egg. Good boy. You're so beautiful. Aren't you? you get some egg, get some nice yellow carotenoids in you and get you nice and green. Nice and neon yellow and green. That's what we want. This papaya was unfortunately refrigerated too much before it got ripened, so it's not the most orange papaya I've ever seen, but it gets the job done. You got some egg there, Rhea? Are you enjoying your new friend? Everyone's behaving themselves and not trying to murder, <laughs> which is always good. <laughs> you got it. There you go. Okay, that piece wasn't good enough. <laughs> it's going in and coming out at the same time. When they don't get fully ripened before they're refrigerated, they're harder than a normally ripened papaya too, which is a little frustrating, but the birds are still able to get through to them, so that's good. Honestly, this is probably some of the best enrichment you can possibly give a toucan. Nope. What is that? What are we alerting to? What's wrong? Oh, okay, back to business. <laughs> I've started just cutting one side of it off because it helps retain uh, the actual flesh of the papaya inside from like falling off onto the ground. And typically, uh, he's pecking at the skin here, but typically they actually just eat into the skin and you actually see that in the wild too that they just like carve out one side of the papaya and then eat the inside from that side and just kind of leave the skin there there you go now we're getting it what are you doing there buddy i think the weather has everybody confused because Lalo's acting kind of hormonal again. All earlier this year, he was just sitting in the corner here and clicking and shaking his beak all over the place. Enjoy this moment of kindness because it ow that, yeah it doesn't last long usually ow ow <laughs> uh, uh oh are we gonna take a bath Maria's behind me trying to bite me Good effort. <laughs> you want to try again? That was a pretty weak attempt, I'm not going to lie. Let's see your true bath skills. You have to jump in, you can't just plop.
Okay, that was much better. Still not quite that skilled, but... I wonder if they ever gave him a big water dish like this, and that's why it's kind of weirding him out a bit. Now we have feather dander and stuff in the water, though. Have to change that out when you're done. There we go. Getting better. <laughs> I think we got it now. We're going to be a skilled bath taker in no time, aren't we?